Things are still relatively quiet in the Atlantic, although there are big indications that that switch is going to flip in the not-too-distant future. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. I'll also have an update on that wave that exited Africa and is heading towards the Caribbean a little bit later on in the video. Also, a pretty decent severe weather threat in the nation's heartland tomorrow. We'll have all that jam-packed towards the end. I'll include the chapters so you can bounce around if you want to. Here we go. We're going to start things off with the long range because I want to dissect the pattern with you guys and talk about why I believe and a lot of people believe that the uptick is coming. And we're going to cram hurricane season into this four to five week window, very similar to what we did last year. So this is the Climate Prediction Center formation chart. These come out every Tuesday by the Climate Prediction Center. And you see two areas highlighted. We're looking at the September 10th through September 16th window. We have a peat shaded area, low shot for development uh, from the Bay of Campeche all the way into the extreme southwest Atlantic. And then we have another area highlighted for a possible African wave to work its way off the African continent. Fast forwarding out deeper into the future this is when the flip the switch is likely going to flip we have long talked about this window from mid to late september through mid to late october that that was going to be the meat and potatoes and it certainly seems like everything is going to line up that way we're going to get into the nitty-gritty over the course of this video but you see there that higher shot for development with the wave rolling off of africa during the third week of september greater than 40 percent shot for development and then also Still hanging on to some, uh, some potential extreme Western Caribbean Gulf mischief as we start to get into gyre season once again. So that is the deal. That is the outlook there. I'll show you some of the modeling when it comes to this. This is going to be the GFS ensembles. Remember, different initial conditions are put into the model to the ensemble suite and where you see solutions converge, you have more confidence. We use ensembles late in the game or early in the game because that's we don't have a lot of data because it's very very far out so we kind of dissect a few different things so here we go this is uh this cluster of colors i'm going to pull out my handy dandy telestrator here all of this this is the african wave that we are currently tracking as of september 2nd it's way out into the eastern atlantic right now but all of that those are the different members and as we talked about in the last few videos it gets close to the Caribbean, and then big cold front sends it packing. We'll talk much more about that one specifically in a couple of minutes, but that shows up. So I just wanted to show you why there was that flare-up of orange and yellows, which, by the way, is what we're looking at here. So let's go deeper into the future. So remember there was that shaded area in the Gulf. So there are a few members that highlight some gyre activity that kind of work their way up into this general area. Again, this is getting way out. This is September 14th, 15th, and 16th. So there's kind of no, I don't want to say credibility, but this is kind of one of those alert things that, again, be careful of singular model runs that show a dire situation into one locality because that's going to be impossible to determine at this stage of the game two weeks out. You hone in on the pattern, which is what ensembles help you to do. So again, there's a low opportunity for it. Again, not many things online, but still the pattern is starting to get right, and ensemble support is there. Then if you remember that other peach color that was out over the Atlantic again, as we take this further out, you see more of these different shaded areas. Again, and it's the yellow and orange represents the lower pressure or at least the uh, the higher probability of that happening, the standard deviation away from the pressure. So certainly the GFS ensembles are all over what areas the Climate Prediction Center highlighted. Now, let me take you further out. Let's go to one of the main reasons why, and it's, of course, the MJO. The other reason is we've highlighted this a lot through the course of the last couple of weeks, La Nina. It's coming back with a vengeance. The water is cooling very quickly in the equatorial Pacific. That helps to increase instability, lower wind shear in the Atlantic. So it's large scale. The environment is improving, unfortunately, for storms in the Atlantic. Also, on a smaller scale, the MJO coming across. And basically what we're looking at here is where we have brown, the air is sinking more often than not. It's harder for thunderstorms to get going. So this is through September 9th. What I have shown here 
And then as we move out to September 16th, look at this. We start to get some green, especially in the Pacific first, a little bit out here. So we're getting things right. And then that's kind of it. Nothing too bright green, but certainly that is the signal. The MJO starts to get into that favorable area. This, by the way, is September 23rd, where we had that red area highlighted by the Climber Prediction Center again. So I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but I just want to, I always like to say, show my work as to why these here, I just don't want to paint arrows or say that I'm expecting a flurry of activity without showing the science and meteorology behind it. That's what makes this weather community different because we break it down with the science and meteorology. I really think that we're cramming hurricane season in to a four to six week window starting maybe September 15th. And that's after we get past maybe Gabrielle. And that looks uh, likely. And we'll get into that in just one second. So back to the MJO, uh, the Earth, that's the uh, CFS climate forecast system there. This is another rendition. I know the aspect ratio is kind of jacked on that, but I wanted to show you because right in through here, the last frame, look right up at the top of your screen. So there, I know there's a lot going on, but right in through here, that's where the United States is. Watch what happens. Watch the green pulse as we get into September 17th. So that is our kind of smaller scale mechanism to help force things up over the next couple of weeks. And it's really that turn from the second to third week of September. I think that's when the switch flips and all of that untapped water. Unfortunately, this is where this is the byproduct of having a quiet season. Again, it's kind of always a double-edged sword. Okay, so on to what's going on right now. I wanted to give that long-range flavor. There's been questions about it, and I wanted to show you, again, that we do have the stars kind of aligning. La Nina coming into play um, in the Madden-Julian oscillation. Maybe a Kelvin wave also crossing. So there's going to be a lot of forcing in the Atlantic. The instability is increasing as well. Just naturally, as we get into fall, that's something that we've highlighted a lot. Here's what's going on now. This is potentially Gabrielle. I never like to name the storm before it happens because there's still a lot of wind shear out there, uh, but a 70% shot for development. We could have a tropical depression by mid to late week, but this would be the G storm. I wanted to show you this um, to kind of calm some fears. And again, we always rid out the garbage on this channel. We're looking at the atmospheric moisture scientifically, meteorologically. This is precipitable water. And basically where you see the higher, the brighter colors, the reds, the rust color, the purple, that's where we have high moisture. I've circled the area. That's a tropical wave. You'll notice it curls a little bit as we get deeper down the line to the end of the first week of September. So it does kind of an Aaron-esque thing. It heads towards the Caribbean, then bounces up and then bounces up further. So a couple of things that I want to note here, first and foremost, there's the potential system. And in here, this is no doubt a tropical system. This is going to be the, the European rendition. But the more important thing that, again, we talked about yesterday that a lot of people aren't talking about, uh, they're keeping the kind of the question, is this coming in? Look at all these colors here. The yellows, the blues, the greens. Look at the scale. Okay, we have low atmospheric moisture. What we have going on here is a huge dip in the jet stream that if we have the storm out here and it's trying to come west, no way. Football season is, a pro is upon us. That trough is like a gigantic offensive line. It's the tush push. I hate Philadelphia sports teams, but that's the best analogy that I can give. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Pittsburgh guy. But that's the offensive line. Nobody can stop the tush push. And that trough is basically that. And it is going to shut the door to anything coming in from the east that stays north of the Caribbean. Now, we talked about this as well. We don't like troughs whenever they are here. And then there's something building in the western Caribbean, Bay of Campeche, or southern Gulf. Because that's going to help to lift them up and then send them over. So that's one of the reasons why... Then in the preseason forecast, we highlighted this area. And again, not saying that that's going to happen, but in the highest probability for 
tropical impacts this season. It just looked like as we got into September and into October that we'd have mischief down here and we'd have the troughs coming down because it's later in the season to help lift things up and send things to the North Gulf Coast. Hoping that's not going to be the case and we time things out right and we don't we get these things to stay squashed, sheared out. That's wish casting. I like to wish cast for the positive. But anyway, we're going to keep a close eye on that. So as a result of that trough as well, fall is coming back in a big way. It's not fall yet. Meteorologically, it is for clean record keeping. Meteorological fall. You may have heard that June, July, August. So that's meteorological summer. That is over. Astronomical fall still in a, in a few weeks. But we are getting a nice taste, especially in the Northeast, Upper Midwest, Great Lakes. It's going to be awesome. Temperature outlook, again, highest probabilities in the 8th to 12th ballpark will be in the Upper Midwest to the Northeast. Showed you these in the latest video. And again, it's going to be oh so nice if you love the crisp stuff. My friends in Minnesota used to live there. Man, is it the best place in the fall. One of them, apple picking. In August and September, Marquette were in the mid-50s, Detroit lower 70s. It's still blazing. The cold front hasn't happened. Look at the difference in temperature on Saturday between Memphis. We're pushing the century mark in St. Louis. It is 78 stinking degrees. Nice and comfortable. That front slides through, though. In Memphis, we're back to the low 80s. We're still boiling in Raleigh. To San Antonio, Houston, we do get a little relief getting into the early stages of next work week. Now, getting back as I'm kind of going into the future, back to present, future, back to present. Here we are tomorrow. I mentioned at the early stage of the video when we got off the bat that there was a pretty decent severe weather risk in the nation's heartland. Here it is from Wichita to Kansas City, uh, back into central Kansas, western Missouri, northern Oklahoma. This is because of that cold front that is going to usher in that unseasonably cool air, that taste of fall going forward. Uh, main threats with this tomorrow is going to be large hail, tornado threat pretty low, uh, damaging wind threat. It's on the lower side, but not it's not as low as a tornado threat. But we are going to have some decent storm energy building into the afternoon where you see the yellows build. This is called CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. Uh, so there's... A lot of instability built up there, and you'll see it's going to be measured in something we call joules per kilogram. So this is getting real nerdy, but we like to do that here, and that's why, again, large hail likely going to be the main threat here as these storms erupt along the front or ahead of the front. Decent instability to work with, and large hail likely going to be um, the main threat, in addition to damaging winds, but to a lower degree. So playing that out here right now, here's the future radar for the entire country. I like to kind of end the videos with a national look. If we have people tuning in from the Pacific Northwest or Southern uh, California, Desert Southwest, wherever you are, Florida, Northeast, Michigan, wherever you may be watching tonight. And thank you for being here. If you're new to the channel, if you happen to find this helpful and, and informative and you like talking weather or just like to get it straight consider hitting that subscribe button there's nine o'clock on your wednesday morning scattered thunderstorms moving through the upper midwest and northern plains you see that counterclockwise motion there that is our upper low driving our cold front through watch closely getting into parts of kansas this is the severe weather risk area so again they are discrete not a ton of directional shear, changing of the wind with height to get these to be supercellular to at least produce tornadoes. Nonetheless, when we get them to street like this, they are going to have the potential to produce some large hail. So again, heads up from Wichita to north of Tulsa to Kansas City. That's going to be the best possible, uh, the best chance. And you see, really, you saw that flare up of purple there late tomorrow night, late Wednesday night, September 3rd. Opportunity there for some really nasty thunderstorms uh, north of Joplin north of Springfield, so I'll be watching that for you guys as that slides uh, back down south. Wide view again, getting into early Thursday morning. Don't be surprised, again, if you're waking up to some downpours or going to bed to some downpours uh, on the western side of Detroit, from Lansing to Detroit, and then sliding through. That's all because of that cold front that is going to give a fantastic weekend. If you love that stuff, 71 in Detroit on Saturday. My gosh, Milwaukee, 63. It's going to be great. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. Again, uh, please don't confuse us looking in the long range with trying to hype it up or scare people. It's out there. Um, there is 
big scientific meteorological evidence that we are going to see a significant uptick really for the first time this season in tropical activity. We've long thought this prior to the season that the first half would be relatively tame and the second half, like last year, would go gangbusters because of that stability issue that we've highlighted at length so far during the 2025 hurricane season. If you want to stay up to date as we get into a likely active period, hope I'm wrong, uh, hit that subscribe button. We talk about the weather, of course, and we also go after some of the hype and the misinformation that is out there all over the place on social media. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. Welcome to all the new subscribers. There have been a bunch. I appreciate you finding us.